A fever? Then where's my food? Huh? Well, I had a fever of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, my husband made such an unbelievable comment. My body, which was burning up to the point of collapse, instantly chilled to the core. This is no joke. I'm not your mother. I'll make sure to give him the punishment he deserves, using any means necessary. My name is Sylvia. I work in product development for a major food manufacturer. I've been married to my husband Daryl for almost three years. When we were newlyweds, we were really in love and looked forward to the day of our married life. In the past year or so, my husband's attitude changed drastically. And not for the better. Due to both of us working, we used to share the household chores. Since I usually come home late, my husband used to take care of things like preparing the bath and making dinner. However, lately, after coming home, he just lounges on the sofa playing mobile games. There's not even a welcome home when I arrive. Instead, he demands, I'm hungry. Make dinner quickly. Even though he's my husband, I can't help feeling like I'm raising a child. Even on this day, as soon as I finished my overtime and came home, my husband's demands came flying at me. Sylvia, you're coming home too late. Seriously, I'm starving. Too late? You know this time of year is always busy, right? Besides, if you're hungry, why don't you make something to eat? We have frozen pizza, instant curry, and various other things stocked up. Huh? Seriously, telling your husband who's come back tired from work to just eat frozen pizza? Ugh, that's really off-putting. No, no, no. I work hard, I'm tired, and I come home later than you. You're the one who's going to force your wife to cook for you, aren't you? While grumbling in my mind, I reluctantly start preparing dinner. It's always like this. No matter what I say, my husband never agrees with me. Ultimately, I give in and end up accommodating him. It wasn't supposed to be like this. While soaking in the bath, I suddenly murmured, Household chores, which we were supposed to handle together properly at the beginning of our marriage, somehow turned into my sole responsibility. I want to somehow improve the situation. However, there is a reason it turned out this way. My husband's parents are also a working couple like us. Both working for top companies, my in-laws concluded that managing household chores while working is impossible. To efficiently address this, they primarily order meals for delivery, and occasionally they hire a housekeeper for cleaning and home-cooked meals. My husband, who has lived like that since childhood, must have secretly longed for a nurturing woman. And when he found out I worked for a food manufacturer, he complimented me like this. A food manufacturer? That's such a charming job for a woman. At that time, I was genuinely delighted to be complimented on my job. Looking back now, he probably thought I was someone who could handle household chores. In the early days of our marriage, I was enthusiastic about cooking, and he happily enjoyed the meals. However, as life and work became busier, the time for household chores decreased, leading to an increase in relying on pre-made meals and delivery services. It seems my husband wasn't pleased with this change. At some point... Handle your housewife duties better. And it's been like this until now. And here we are. Nowadays, he doesn't help with cleaning, laundry, or even meals. Despite that, he's become the type to complain about my housework. And even when he comes home tired from work, he casually demands that dinner should be ready. And he insists on being the first to use the bath. Today, I'm tired and want to go to bed early. Can I take a bath first? If I were to ask that casually, he would start getting angry, as if implying I were crazy. Huh? You as a housewife want to take a bath before your husband? Seriously? What kind of attitude is that? Just because I'm a housewife doesn't mean we don't both have jobs, right? I've been working overtime and am genuinely tired today. Don't mess around. Lately you've been slacking off on cooking too. What are you tired from? At least, improve your housework a bit more before complaining. 
These kinds of arguments are a common occurrence. If things continue like this, living with him might become difficult. Lately, I've even started thinking about such things. One day, something unusual happened. As usual, I woke up, but my body felt strangely off. Normally, my body, which easily gets up, felt unusually heavy today, and I wandered through the day in a daze. When I checked my temperature with a thermometer, it was a staggering 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Perhaps the accumulated fatigue had caught up with me. I contacted my workplace and informed them that I would be taking the day off. As I was eating yogurt with a dry mouth, my husband appeared after waking up. Normally, I would have already changed and be preparing breakfast by this time. Did he notice something was different today? Why are you in pajamas? And is it okay for you to be so relaxed? My husband inquired. Sorry, it seems I have a fever. Fever? How high is it? It was 104 degrees Fahrenheit when I checked, so I took the day off from work. Huh? So, what about my meal? Huh? I couldn't help but question my husband's words. My meal? Is that really the first thing he's concerned about? Even though his own wife has a fever of 104 degrees Fahrenheit, is he seriously asking me to still prepare dinner later? Without the energy to yell at my husband due to my high fever, I spoke in a calm voice. Sorry, but could you prepare something yourself? We have bread, eggs, and bacon available. Huh? Why should I prepare my own meal in the morning? Are you trying to tire me out before work? But I'm really not feeling well. Don't act like a sick person over a little fever. Besides, you can prepare yoga for yourself, but you can't do it for your husband's meal? You're a cold woman. In this situation, I was genuinely appalled at my husband, who could casually shower me with insults. Even though I mentioned having a fever, why would he say such things? When he's sick, he just lies there and lazily sleeps all the time. But today, I really don't have the energy to prepare anything. So, as I started to say this, my husband clicked his tongue. Oh, fine. Whatever. I get it. I won't even get a meal prepared for me. Poor me. Well, I'm off to work. With that sarcastic remark, my husband left the house. What is it now? Whether due to the fever or anger, tears started flowing uncontrollably. In this situation, if there's no dinner, when he returns home, he will surely complain. However, I'm not in a state to go shopping. I decided to call my mother-in-law and ask her to do some minimal shopping. When I called, my mother-in-law, likely before starting work, answered immediately. Hello, Sylvia. Is something wrong? Oh, Mom, I'm sorry to bother you out of the blue. Actually, this morning, I had a fever of 104 degrees Fahrenheit. What? 104 degrees Fahrenheit? Yes, so if it's okay after you finish work, I'd like you to deliver some food. Of course, I'm worried about you. Are you sure you're okay? I'd love to go now, but I'm working and... By the way, where's Daryl? Oh, he already went to work. Jeez, that boy. Anyway, don't push yourself too hard, okay? I'll come over later, so rest up. Yes, thank you. As expected from a working woman, she gets straight to the point. After finishing the call with my mother-in-law, I felt exhausted and ended up falling asleep on the sofa. When I woke up, the clock already showed 5 p.m. in the evening. Huh? Was I sleeping this much? My husband will be home soon. I haven't prepared dinner yet, and this is not good. I didn't have the energy to cook from scratch, so I arranged two pre-made side dishes and prepared instant soup. Then, my husband came home. Where's dinner? Oh, well, I guess something's prepared. Had a whole day off, huh? After returning home, he made such sarcastic remarks, but I had no energy to get angry at him. Even though I had prepared something, he said, I'll take a bath first. Saying that, he headed to the bathroom. Even though he usually eats first, why today of all days? As I complained, my phone rang. The caller was my mother-in-law. Hello? Oh, Sylvia. I've just arrived at the entrance of the apartment, 
Can you open the door? Sure. Please, wait a moment. Just as I was about to open the door, my husband, who should have been in the bathroom, returned to the living room, making loud footsteps. As soon as he saw me, he started shouting angrily. Hey, Sylvia, haven't you heated the water for the bath? You had the whole day off. Can't you even do this? Oh, sorry. I was only thinking about preparing dinner. Useless. I'll just take a shower. Saying that, he returned to the bathroom with heavy steps. Suddenly, I realized that the phone call was still connected. At that moment, the perfect idea for revenge against my husband came to my mind. Mom, did you hear that conversation just now? When I asked, my mother-in-law responded with an angry voice. Yes, of course, I heard it. My foolish son's stupid remarks, loud and clear. Um, Mom... Can I keep the phone connected like this? I want you to come in through the front door when I give the signal. Then my mother-in-law seemingly understanding something said, Understood. She readily accepted my suggestion. Right after this conversation, my husband returned from the shower. Ugh, thanks to you, I didn't even get to soak in the tub when I was tired. Just lazing around at home all day and not doing any proper housework? Seriously annoying. He sat at the table with a sullen expression, looked at the meal on the table, and burst into laughter this time. Hey, Sylvia, what's this? A joke, right? Joke? What do you mean? The side dishes are pre-made, and the soup is instant. <laughs> is this for real? What kind of a harassment is this, making your husband eat this stuff? I had no choice. I had a fever since this morning. And even preparing this dinner was a struggle. Huh? Acting like a baby just because you have a fever? Normally, even with a fever, a good wife would do everything for her husband. Do you think you can skip housework because of a mere fever? Saying that, my husband threw the dish, including the side dishes, into the trash. W wait a minute. Throwing it away is cruel. Why would you do such a thing? Obviously, right? I come home tired, and the only side dishes are pre-made. Unbelievable. Come on, quickly make something. At that moment, I felt my love for my husband rapidly fading away. Until a moment ago, I had been dazed with a fever, but now I could feel myself freezing from the core. I took out my smartphone from my pocket and informed my mother-in-law. Mom is good now. I'll open the door now. My husband, perhaps unable to comprehend the situation. W what Did you just say mom? He exclaimed in disbelief. I confidently declared, Yes, that's right. Your mother is also listening to this conversation. Huh? At the right moment, there was a knock on the door and I opened it. There stood my mother-in-law with a stern expression. M mom Startled by the sudden appearance of his mother, my husband was flustered. Unfazed by him, my mother-in-law walked into the house. Mom, why are you here? I heard Sylvia had a fever, so I rushed over. More importantly, about the conversation just now. What exactly is going on? Oh, well... Forcing your wife, who has a 104 degrees Fahrenheit fever, to do housework? You. What kind of despicable man are you? Did he also throw away the meal she made for you? The one who should be thrown away is you, you foolish son. Uh, uh. He probably didn't expect his mother to hear the conversation. My husband turned pale and collapsed on the spot. Honestly, I thought you two were getting along, but to think you're such an irredeemable man. Acting all high and mighty as the head of the household is embarrassingly shameful. N no, Mom, it's not like that. What's not like that? Did you even once worry about Sylvia when she had a fever? Did you take any action to show concern for her even once? Well, that's... My mother-in-law seized my husband's collar and bluntly spoke. Listen, you're in a position now where you can't complain about being thrown out, okay? If you don't like that, then make sure to protect Sylvia. I was expected of my mother-in-law, a career woman who managed to raise him while working. My husband was already teary-eyed. Fine. Sylvia, I'm sorry. 
he said, bowing deeply to me. Feeling relieved by my mother-in-law's refreshing reprimand, I lost consciousness on the spot. Several hours later, when I woke up, I found myself on the bed. The door to the room was open, and there was a delightful aroma coming from the living room. Heading there, I discovered my husband standing in the kitchen. Huh? Daryl? Oh, Sylvia, are you awake? More importantly, why are you in the kitchen? What's that delicious smell? My husband, looking somewhat embarrassed, handed me freshly made risotto. I was in a state of blank amazement at the unexpected action. Did you make this, Daryl? Yeah, I looked it up and tried, but it's my first time, so I can't guarantee the taste. No, I'm happy. Thank you. That day, the risotto my husband made was the most delicious I had ever eaten. While I was enjoying the risotto, my husband rushed to the supermarket for me. He bought a bunch of things like sports drinks and jello that was easy for a sick person to eat. This incident prompted my husband to start helping with household chores again. When I come home late, he prepares dinner and fills the bathtub for me. Whenever I say thank you, my husband always responds with a shy smile. If I don't do it, mom will get bad again. He says that, but surely that's not the only reason. Maybe he reflected on his past actions due to his mother's words. He belittled me, imposed household chores, insulted me, and didn't care even when I had a fever. When confronted by his mother about his foolishness and the despicable things he did as a husband, he sincerely acknowledged his faults. Since then, he started asking me about things he doesn't understand about the household chores. He now accompanies me on shopping trips, something he never did before. We even plan our daily meals together. Occasionally, my mother-in-law, who has grown concerned about me, visits our home. In those situations, my husband may seem a bit blunt, but he actually takes my mother-in-law's advice to heart, making an effort to share responsibilities and lighten my load. Thanks to my mother-in-law, of course, but my husband himself also tried to change. That was the happiest thing for me. It has allowed me to put more into my work than ever before. My personal life has also become more fulfilling. I have nothing but gratitude for my mother-in-law, who scolded her own son and brought about a change in my husband. I am determined to cherish and protect the married life she has brought us in the future. My husband. Cup fired today, told FIL about not being able to send money anymore. F ill, never received any, confronted husband then. Allowance? We've never received anything like that. Huh? One day, I discovered a shocking fact during a conversation with my father-in-law, Jason. I couldn't believe that behind my back, such a thing was happening. My name is Lila, 29 years old. I live with my husband, Andrew, whom I married four years ago. So one day, when I got home from work, I found Andrew, who usually comes home late, already there. I immediately sensed something was off. He had lined up bottles of beer and whiskey all over the floor, and his face was bright red. Andrew, what's going on? I rushed over to him in a panic. Leave me alone. I can't take this anymore. He raised his voice. What do you mean you can't take it? What happened? And since when do you drink so much? It's none of your business. Damn it. That crappy boss of mine. Crappy boss? My husband always had endless complaints about his job, constantly bad-mouthing his boss and the company. Probably something unpleasant happened at work today. I decided to try and calm him down. You had a tough day, huh? Tonight, I'll make your favorite stew. I'll make it quickly. Let's eat together. I tried to cheer him up with a cheerful attitude, but his expression didn't change. 
In fact, he seemed more irritated. All the while, he kept downing drinks, so I spoke to him. Hey, are you okay? You have work tomorrow. Maybe you should go to bed soon. He then let out a big sigh. <sighs> Just leave me alone. Not going to work tomorrow. What? Not going to work? What does he mean? Did he get into a fight with his boss? I decided to ask him about it. Why aren't you going tomorrow? Did something happen at work? No. I just got fired. That's all. You got fired? I was shocked. I never imagined he would say that. Oh, wait. Just wait. Fired? Where did that come from? Don't blame me. They just told me out of the blue. I don't know if it's due to financial issues or staff cuts, but I'm glad to be done with that company. <sighs> glad to be done? Honestly, I was nothing but anxious. We could live in our current house only because we both had incomes. Our expenses, including food and living costs, an allowance we give to my in-laws. Anyway, I got fired, so let me do what I want today. He was slurring his words from drinking too much, and I couldn't do anything about it. I realized we wouldn't be able to continue sending money to my in-laws unless he found a new job. So, I decided to contact my father-in-law when the time was right. The next morning, as expected, Andrew had fallen asleep on the sofa. Empty cans and bottles were scattered everywhere, showing he had been drinking late. After cleaning up, I called my father-in-law. Hello, Jason. I'm sorry for calling so early in the morning. Oh, Lila. How are you doing, my dear? Um... It's hard to say, but it seems Andrew suddenly got fired from his job. What? Andrew got fired? Is that true? Yes. He mentioned something about financial difficulties and cost-cutting. That's sudden. To get fired just like that. I felt terribly sorry as I explained to him. After all, it was thanks to my in-laws that... Andrew got his job. Since the beginning of our marriage, my husband had been addicted to gambling. In the early days, I was unaware of his gambling addiction, happily seeing him off to work every morning. Have a good day, honey. Thanks. You too. I might be late today because of overtime. Oh? Don't work too hard. I always thought he was working hard. But when I smelled cigarette smoke on him, a non-smoker, I instantly knew something was wrong. I confronted him right away. I just started smoking because of stress. That's what he said. Really? He hated smoking so much. Day by day, his behavior became more peculiar. The kind, gentle man I knew was gone, replaced by someone increasingly irritable. One day, he stopped hiding his visits to the casino. He even started pouring his salary and savings into gambling, not caring about being absent from work, only interested in the day's wins and losses. Are you really not going to work anymore? Shut up. It's none of your business. I'm using my own money, so don't get in my way. Saying that, he rudely left the house, and always came back empty-handed. When our savings ran out, he turned to me for money. Lend me two hundred dollars. I'll double it and give it back. I'm sure to win tomorrow. Trust me on this. Can't you even lend a few hundred dollars when your husband is in trouble? Gambling changed his personality completely. The kind husband I once knew was gone. 
Eventually, he started gambling with borrowed money. I was furious. What do you think you're doing? Gambling with borrowed money? That's insane. This is totally unacceptable. No matter how strongly I confronted him, he showed no remorse. Instead, he blamed me for his debts. What? You didn't lend me the money, so I had to borrow. He's completely addicted to gambling. If I don't put a stop to this now, our life will fall apart. Don't be ridiculous. I didn't lend you money because I want you to quit gambling. I'm covering all our living expenses since we're out of savings. And you have the nerve to blame me? Just lend me the money. I'll win at the casino and prove it to you. Just to listen to your husband for once. Have you ever won big? I don't think so. Stop chasing these ridiculous dreams and face reality. Shut up. Don't interfere with a man's entertainment. If only he would gamble within reason. But he's completely addicted. His unreasonable behavior is destroying our marriage. No matter how much I try to convince him, he won't listen. I might be at my wit's end. During these tough times, it was my in laws who scolded my husband. Do you even realize you have a family? Getting into debt over gambling. Apologize to Lila. He's right. You got such a wonderful wife, and this is what you do? What are you thinking? You're going to end up divorced at this rate. They lectured him repeatedly about the importance of marriage and family. Then, Andrew finally broke down and apologized. Lila, I'm really sorry. I swear, I'll never gamble again. Please, forgive me. Then my father in law said to me, Lila, what my son did is unforgivable. We've really troubled you. If it's okay with you, please forgive him just this once. Seeing how earnestly my in laws apologized, I decided to give Andrew another chance. It was also my in laws who took on the burden of his debts and arranged a new job for him. Until his salary stabilized, they even transferred living expenses to us. We could continue our life as before, thanks to my in laws. I was deeply grateful and started sending them $350 every month to repay their kindness. But with Andrew losing his job, we couldn't afford to send money anymore. I apologized to my father in law over the phone. Jason, I'm really sorry. Despite my being here, things turned out this way. Oh, no, no. It's the company's circumstances, right? Lila, you're not at fault. Don't worry about it. His kind words touched my heart. But I have something more important to convey. I really hate to tell you this, but I don't think we'll be able to send you money anymore. You know, the monthly allowance. Then, in a surprised tone, he said, Allowance? We've never received anything like that. His response left me speechless. No, Jason, I mean the money we were sending you every month. $350 every month. Remember? Uh, what are you talking about? I just asked my wife, and she doesn't know anything either. What? That can't be. I have been scrapping together the living expenses, putting $350 in an envelope, and giving it to Andrew every month. If it wasn't reaching my in laws, then. Lila, what exactly is going on? I don't understand either. But it's true. I've been giving Andrew the money every month to give to you guys. He spoke again, hearing my desperate plea. Lila, can we come over tonight to discuss this? Oh, and keep this between us for now. Don't tell Andrew. All right, I won't tell him. I was sure I had given Andrew $350 each month. 
If it wasn't reaching my in-laws, the only explanation was Andrew himself. Unbelievable. He must have been secretly using it. I can't forgive this. I'll make him confess everything, and he will pay for this. An hour later, my in-laws arrived at our house. Andrew's eyes widened in surprise when he saw them enter the living room. Mom? Dad? What are you doing here? He was clearly flustered, obviously hiding something. Andrew? Is there anything you need to tell us? Though my father-in-law indirectly questioned him, Andrew pretended to be ignorant. Huh? What are you talking about? You can't just show up like this. Lila must be trouble too. You should leave for today. I couldn't hold back anymore and yelled at my husband. Don't use me as an excuse. Just tell the truth already. He looked shocked as he turned to me. What are you talking about? Don't play dumb. I'm talking about the money I asked you to give to your parents. What happened to it? His eyes were clearly evasive as I pressured him. Uh, that? Well... Your parents said they never received it once. But I definitely gave it to you every month. Where did all that money go these past two years? It's not like that, Lila. Calm down. There's a reason for this. A reason? Well, let's hear it. Where did the money for your parents go? Explain it so we can understand. Come on. His face turned pale. His earlier bravado gone. What? Can't say it? I hope you're not going to tell me you used it yourself. My in-laws and I glared at Andrew. Realizing he couldn't escape, he finally spoke quietly. Sorry, I actually used it a bit for gambling. What? Gambling? You're joking, right? It was the last thing I wanted to hear. After everything that had happened, he was gambling again. I can't believe this. You promised never to gamble again, didn't you? After all the trouble you caused your parents, we agreed to send the money as a way to repay them. What were you thinking? As I yelled at my husband, tears of frustration spilled over. I thought we were finally able to repay my in-law's kindness. Was I the only one who thought we needed to support them now? Tears blurred my vision as my mother-in-law patted my back. Just to be clear, you were fired due to company reasons, right? Um... His question made Andrew flinch. Oh, yes, that's true. Andrew, if you need to correct anything, now's the time. If it turns out you've lied... Before he could finish, Andrew suddenly drooped his head and said, I'm sorry. The truth is, I got fired because of my poor work attitude. It wasn't due to financial issues or staff cuts. I was speechless at his words, too appalled to respond. His father didn't wait to ask his son. What do you mean? What did you do regarding your work attitude? Actually, I got caught skipping work to gamble. Oh, gosh. This is just too much. Hearing this, I felt everything was absurd. I have forgiven his past and resolved to support him from scratch. What was all my effort for? You've got to be kidding me. Jason started yelling. I told you so many times. To understand what it means to be a person with a family. And yet, you pull this ridiculous stunt again. As my mother-in-law quietly wept, I was too numb to cry. Just looking down on my husband who kept his head bowed in shame. While my father-in-law was furious, Andrew kept making excuses. But I'll do better on my next job, okay? It was just bad luck this time. I can't do this anymore. Let's get a divorce. The words slipped out without me even realizing. What? Divorce? You're joking, right? I unleashed my anger on my bewildered husband. Joking? You think I'm joking in this situation? But a divorce over this is a bit extreme, isn't it? Extreme? Are you kidding me? Do you even realize what you've done? 
What you did is the same as embezzlement. My voice trembled with rage. Lila, calm down. I won't do it again. I promise, this time for sure, please. It's too late. Oh. You've betrayed us twice. I can't continue living with someone like that. We're getting a divorce. No way. Watching this, my father-in-law nodded in agreement. We two no longer consider someone like you as our son. From now on, we're cutting ties with you. Whoa, 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 wait. Lila, Mom, Dad, you're joking, right? Please, forgive me. He was crying and pleading, but our minds were made up. I fetched the divorce papers and made him sign them in front of my in-laws. Thank you for everything. Goodbye. I left the apartment with my packed belongings. Lila, wait. Let's talk this over one more time. I won't do it again. I promise. Wait, Lila. Andrea kept shouting after me, but I never looked back. My in-laws must have made the same resolution. Soon after this incident, they moved far away to ensure he wouldn't come to them for help. I have no idea what happened to him since then. Rumor has it that his gambling debts have spiraled out of control and now he's leading a desperate hand-to-mouth existence, running from creditors. He brought it all upon himself. As for me, I'm living fairly fulfilling days. I still have a good relationship with my ex-in-laws. We go out to eat together, matching our schedules. My marriage to Andrew was a failure, but meeting such wonderful in-laws is a treasure I'll cherish for life. From now on, I want to repay them as much as I can for all they've done. While having lunch with my mother-in-law, my husband lied over the phone that she had fallen down, so I kept quiet that she was actually right in front of me. I was having lunch with my mother-in-law while my husband was away on his business trip when I received a call from him. Something serious has happened. Actually, my mom collapsed. What? I looked up. My mother-in-law, who was in front of me, also widened her eyes. So, you know the route back from my business trip passes by my parents' house, right? I'm going to go straight to my parents' house to take care of my mom. I looked at my mother-in-law again. She placed a finger on her lips. It meant for me to keep silent about our lunch. Understanding her intention... I decided to align my story with what my husband told me. Is your mom okay? Should I come too? It's okay. I'll share something with you since we're on the topic, but my mom isn't too fond of you, calling you a disobedient daughter-in-law. So, you don't have to come. Okay, I get it. And so my husband's call ended. By this point, I had already realized... My husband is clearly lying. The reason must be something he couldn't tell me. As I clenched my fists and trembled, my mother-in-law told me, Well, what should we do from here? My name is Megan Miller, and I'm 30 years old. I'm a part-time housewife in the second year of marriage. My job is freelance writing from home. I'm what you might call a writer. I specialize in writing travel-related articles, drawing on my experience working at a travel agency during my single days. I met my husband, Ryan Miller, through a college friend named Kirk. Kirk introduced us, and later he also introduced me to one of Ryan's colleagues. Ryan worked in a typical position at a small to medium-sized company, And other than his somewhat handsome appearance, he was a rather ordinary person. We dated without any issues for about two years. And then I was proposed to on my birthday, and I joyfully accepted. We visited my parents to give our greetings and seek their permission for the marriage. The next step was going to Ryan's parents' house. His parents had already divorced, and his father had moved overseas, so only his mother remained at their family home. I had heard that Ryan's mother was a self-made businesswoman who had started her own company, 
so I was initially excited and nervous about meeting her. Nice to meet you. I'm Megan, and I've been working with Ryan. Upon my introduction, my mother-in-law exclaimed, I've been looking forward to meeting you. Please come in, come in. She had a youthful and straightforward aura with her short haircut. I nervously took a seat next to Ryan. Mom, I'm thinking of marrying her. Well, if it's a decision you two made together, I won't oppose it. Congratulations. With a smiling face, my mother-in-law conveyed this, and I felt relieved. During the subsequent conversation, the topic shifted to my job. Megan, what kind of work do you do? I'm a freelance writer. Most of the time, I'm at home, working on my computer. When I responded, my mother-in-law's face quickly clouded over. A writer working from home? Is that job stable? Huh? I mean, it seems more like a pastime. Your income must be unstable. It's not like that. I consider it a respectable job. However, my mother-in-law maintained her difficult expression. But still, having a stable job like a regular employee would be better. I find fulfillment in my current job. At that point, Ryan intervened. Well, how about we leave it at that for now? The tension eased momentarily, but my mother-in-law kept her up, bros furrowed. While my mother-in-law didn't oppose our marriage, she didn't show understanding toward my job. Nevertheless, our new home and my in-law's place were about two hours apart. I thought we would have minimal interaction with my mother-in-law in our daily lives. So, we went ahead and got married. The wedding went well. Even Kirk, who played a crucial role in our meeting, gave a speech and praised us. And so, life with Ryan began. In the first year of marriage, he also helped with household chores, and I think it was a happy newlywed life. However, around the second year of marriage, Ryan started claiming that work was getting busier, and he began coming home late. Nevertheless, without any suspicion, I supported him during his busy times. While I occasionally encounter my mother-in-law, she consistently advised, Get a stable job as a regular employee, or get some qualifications. Feeling tired of my mother-in-law's repeated comments, one day I confided in Ryan. Ryan, I'm not fond of your mother. She is critical of my work, and... Well, my mom is quite old-fashioned. You don't have to force yourself to get along. If you say that, it's a relief. He never tried to force a friendship between me and my mother-in-law, or make me comply with her demands. That was something I appreciated. Then one day, while working at home, my phone rang. The caller was my mother-in-law, whom I hadn't spoken to in a while. For a moment, I hesitated to answer, but I couldn't ignore it, so I picked up the phone. Hello, Mom. What can I do for you? Megan, I wanted to talk to you about your work today. Mom, please stop. I... It's not that. I want to apologize to you. Huh? Upon listening, it turned out that my mother-in-law had come across an article I had written in a travel magazine by chance. She found out that I was a well-known writer contributing to several magazines. I read your articles, and... They were wonderful pieces of writing. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. Maybe I've looked down on the job of being a writer until now, but I realized how capable you are and felt ashamed of myself. I truly apologize. Mom. I was surprised by my mother-in-law's apology, but I was also pleased. Except for the fact that she opposed my work, I had no ill feelings about my mother-in-law's character. In fact, I even respected her. The barriers between us seemed to melt away, and I felt happy about it. So, it's not exactly an apology, but I'll be heading your way soon. How about letting me treat you to lunch? Huh? Lunch? Uh, if you don't want to, feel free to decline. But I'll also like to hear more about your work. No, Mom, I'd be delighted. Please, let me join you. 
And so three days later, my mother-in-law and I arranged to have lunch at a restaurant in my town. I wanted to share this with Ryan, but he was still busy with work and had to leave for a business trip the next morning. I wonder how Ryan would react if he knew I was having a friendly lunch with his mother while he's away on a business trip. I'm sure he'd be happy. During that time, I was casually thinking about things like that. On the day of the lunch with my mother-in-law, I dressed up since we were meeting at a high-end restaurant. Megan, over here. My mother-in-law waved and apologized to me again with a smile. I'm sorry for saying various things about your work. It's okay, Mom. Let's enjoy today together. I'm glad you say that. Eat anything you like. As expected of a female president. Let's indulge in something I don't usually eat. Well, Megan, you're such a fun person. <laughs> My mother-in-law and I exchanged smiles and headed to the restaurant. While having lunch and talking with my mother-in-law, I began to see her positive qualities that I hadn't noticed before. I developed a sense of respect for my strong yet kind mother-in-law. After my mother-in-law shared her divorce story, she said, When I got divorced, having a job saved me. I realized the importance of money and work. The experience taught me how crucial it is for women to work. Mom, is that why you recommended a regular job to me? Yes, I didn't want you to struggle even if something happened. But Megan, you're doing a splendid job. I'm glad you understand. I'll work hard to become like you, Mom. In the next moment, my phone rang. It was Ryan. Oh, it's Ryan. I wonder what's going on. Ryan, you're on a business trip, right? Yes, I'll put it on speaker so that you can hear Mom too. I put the phone on speaker and placed it on the table as I answered the call. Then Ryan's voice could be heard. Megan? Hey, something serious happened. Aren't you on a business trip right now? Well, the trip went fine, but something difficult occurred. Actually, my mom collapsed. What? I looked up. My mother-in-law in front of me also widened her eyes. So, my return route from the business trip passes by my parents' house, you know? I plan to go home directly to take care of my mom. I looked at my mother-in-law again. She put her index finger to her lips. She seemed to be indicating to keep quiet about our relationship. Understanding her intention, I decided to align my story with Ryan's. Is your mom okay? Should I come too? No, it's fine. You don't get along with my mom, right? But... It's okay. I'll share something with you since we're on the topic, but my mom isn't too fond of you, calling you a disobedient daughter-in-law. So, no need to come. I understand. All right, I'll hang up now. Ryan's call ended like this. By that time, I had already realized. He was clearly lying. The reason must be something he couldn't tell me. Could it be an affair? Tightening my fist, trembling, I was about to speak when my mother-in-law interrupted. So, Megan, what should we do now? Mom, this is probably what I think it is, isn't it? Unfortunately, seems like you're not wrong. There's likely another woman. But don't worry, Megan, I'm on your side. Empowered by my mother-in-law's strong words, I was ready to uncover the truth. Afterward, my mother-in-law and I devised a plan. First, I think it's a good idea to check with the company. Upon my mother-in-law's suggestion, I remembered Kirk, a mutual friend who works at Ryan's company. When I messaged Kirk that I wanted to talk, he replied, I can meet you after work today. So my mother-in-law and I went to the designated pub together. Kirk was surprised that my mother-in-law was with me, but when we told him everything, he finally opened up. This is what I found out after checking with Ryan's department. He didn't mention a business trip. Instead, he's taken paid leave. So, he was lying after all. This is something I've been hesitating to tell you, Megan. Kirk looked back and forth at my mother-in-law and me. When my mother-in-law urged him to speak, Kirk seemed to have made up his mind. Actually, it seems Ryan's subordinate, Michelle, is quite close to him. 
She also took paid leave at the same time, this time. His subordinate? Oh, and there are pictures like this circulating around the company. Kirk showed me his smartphone. The photo displayed Ryan and a young woman walking in the hotel district. Thank you. May I have a copy of this photo? Of course. I'm sorry, Megan. I've been feeling responsible since I introduced him. That's why I couldn't bring myself to say it until now. Kirk, you're not to blame. By the way, do you know the address of that woman Ryan is involved with? I'm not sure, but there was a female colleague she was close to. I'll ask her for the address. At that moment, Kirk contacted his colleague, who informed us that the woman, Michelle, lived in an apartment near the next station. Thank you, Kirk. You've been a great help. After Kirk and I parted ways, my mother-in-law apologized deeply to me. Megan, I'm truly sorry on behalf of my son. It's okay, Mom. It's not your fault. I'll confront him with this evidence. I'll make him take responsibility and the other woman, too. Wait, Megan. With just this photo, he might deny anything beyond walking together. We need more solid evidence. Leave it to me. Saying that, my mother-in-law made a call to a nearby detective agency. Surprisingly, my mother-in-law was willing to spend money to obtain decisive evidence. The detective agency she contacted was well known for conducting thorough investigations. Megan, please ask him when he will be back. Sure. Let me send a message. Oh, I got a reply. I'll be back the day after tomorrow. Upon hearing this, my mother-in-law nodded at me. Two days later, when I was at home, Ryan returned. I'm home. Welcome back. How is mom doing? Oh, she has calmed down quite a bit. It seems I'll need to come back home more often from now on. It must be tough. She feels reassured when I'm around. Just as Ryan mentioned that, the door of the adjacent room slammed open. Who feels reassured with you around? Huh? Mom? Ryan was so surprised that his legs almost gave away. Approaching with my mother-in-law, the two of us leaned in together. Wait, what's going on? Why is Mom here? You were supposed to be on bad terms. Too bad, we reconciled. Megan and I were having lunch when she received a call saying I had collapsed, so I was surprised. Th that's... As Ryan's face turned pale, I told him. What have you been doing for the past few days? Ryan, still pale, remained silent. Thinking the truth wouldn't come out easily, I finally said. The business trip was a lie, and you were on a cheating trip with Michelle, right? What? Michelle who? I confronted Ryan with a snapshot from Kirk of them walking in the hotel district. Ryan, turning pale, predictably says something like this. Th this was just a coincidence. I happened to pass by instead of going to a drinking party. There's nothing between her and me. It's just a regular boss-subordinate relationship. Oh, really? Then what about this? I confronted him with another photo. In this one, Ryan was clearly leaving Michelle's house and kissing her at the doorstep. What is this? After cheating on me by pretending to go on a business trip, you lied to me and spent time at your fair partner's house, right? These photos were obtained by my mother hiring a detective agency. What? My mom did this? Seeing the unbelieving expression on Ryan's face, my mother-in-law suddenly slapped him. You idiot son. Doing something like this while having such a good wife? Have you forgotten the reason for my divorce from your father? It was because of his affair, right? You're just like him, going for the same disgraceful path. M mom I once talked to you about inheriting my company, right? I'm canceling that. And not just that, I'm cutting off our relationship. Be prepared for that. Th this can't be. Seemingly realizing there was no escape, Ryan slumped beside me. Megan, this was just a momentary lapse. Please forgive me. I'll be a better husband from now on. At that moment, I cut him off with a stern voice. Don't be ridiculous. Don't say pleasant things after lying and betraying me. We're getting a divorce. I'll be claiming a generous settlement for the infidelity damages. Uh, uh. 
Unable to say anything more, Ryan, who was now whimpering, was driven out of the house by my mother-in-law. Later on, the divorce between Ryan and me was finalized. My mother-in-law, acting as my attorney, managed to secure a settlement higher than the market average. I also claimed a settlement from the affair partner. The incident led to the final breakup between Ryan and Michelle. Afterward, my mother-in-law generously provided me with a significant amount of money as compensation. My mother-in-law was unforgiving. Ryan's job seemed to be a result of his mother-in-law's connections, and she conveyed to the company's president to fire her son. Due to his involvement with a subordinate and disrupting the workplace atmosphere, Ryan was dismissed from the company. Ryan has saved up enough money to pay my alimony, and his mother-in-law gave up on him. He now lives in a rundown apartment and works day and night as a day laborer. Even knowing that, I have no sympathy whatsoever. I just think, serves him right. I, on the other hand, moved to a new place with the alimony money, and I continue to work as a writer as usual. My relationship with my mother-in-law is such that we address each other by our first names. We occasionally go on trips together, and there still seems to be a lot to learn from her. I will cherish my good relationship with my mother-in-law and continue to live life positively from now on. Living with my in-law's husband. I'm out. Care for my parents. Us. What? He's with mistress. We collectively get revenge. Result. Lol. My husband's infidelity came to light. To make matters worse, he dumped his parents on me and fled to his lover. I decided to team up with my in-laws and start plotting revenge. <laughs> Just you wait. I'm going to bring you down to the depths of hell. My name is Beth, 29 years old. I've been married to Carl for two years. We met at a mixer and quickly grew close over shared interests. After dating, we got married and were enjoying peaceful, happy days. Then one day, Carl came home from work, looking confused, and started talking. I just got a call. My dad's been in an accident. What? He has? He's not in life-threatening condition, but... He's got paralysis in his right leg, and it might not fully recover, even with rehab. Oh no. Turns out my father-in-law, Scott, had an accident while shopping. Thankfully, he wasn't badly hurt, and is still quite spry, but the paralysis in his leg forced him to retire. This put a strain on the household finances, as my mother-in-law, Mary, is a homemaker. Seeing this, Carl made a proposal to me. Beth, I know this is sudden, but can my parents move in with us? M move in? Dad will need care for a while, and Mom isn't in a position to work. I want to help them, as their son. He seemed genuinely worried about his parents. His eyes were full of parental love. Your parents have always been there for us, and I want to help if I can. Wanting to support my husband, I agreed to the living arrangement. Are you sure? Of course. I know you care about your parents, and we should help each other. Thank you. Oh, this is great. I'm so glad I married you. So, it was decided that my in-laws would move in with us the following month. I had a very good impression of them since we first met for our wedding greetings. Scott is a man of few words, but a solid presence in the home. Mary is friendly and always makes an effort to chat with me, even when I'm nervous. Since moving in, she's been actively helping with cooking. Mary, could you show me how to make pork chops? I love your seasoning. Oh, I'm flattered. It's actually quite simple. Really? Oh, and I also love your tacos. Would you mind teaching me how to make them? How about we make tacos for dinner tonight? Will you help me? 
Of course, I'd love to help. Her cooking skills are a big help, and when I'm not working, we take care of Scott together, or go out for meals as a trio. Carl's job often requires him to work late, and he's been staying even later since his parents moved in. Naturally, I spent more time with my in-laws, and our relationship deepened. And then one day, while cleaning up after dinner, Mary, looking unusually serious, spoke to me. Beth, can we talk? What's wrong, Mary? Carl is working late again tonight, isn't he? Yes, he texted me earlier that he'd be late because of overtime. I see. Her expression remained gloomy, concerned. I asked her directly, "What was wrong? What's going on? It's not like you to ask such things out of the blue. It's just that I'm worried. If something's bothering you, please tell me. I don't want to see you looking so anxious. Yes, I know. I need to be honest with you. She looked me straight in the eye, as if she'd made up her mind. We both sat down, facing each other. Beth, it's about Carl. I think he might be cheating. Cheating? Carl? Yes, I'm not entirely sure, but probably. I felt like the world was spinning. Mary continued, looking concerned. Last night, he came home late, right? Yes. We were all asleep, but I woke up to a noise. He was on the phone. On the phone? Yes. He was calling someone, Erica, saying things like, "I had a great time today." Same time tomorrow. It made me suspect. I see. I'm sorry, Beth. My foolish son. Let's not jump to conclusions. I'll talk to him when he gets home tonight. The conversation ended awkwardly, and I waited for Carl to return. He came home after midnight. We need to talk. I confronted him right away. Talk? What's this all about? I'll get straight to the point. Are you cheating? W- what? W- what are you talking about? Seeing his panicked reaction, I was convinced he was guilty. So, it's true. Erica, right? How long has this been going on? Wait, how do you know her name? Just answer me. When did you start cheating? Uh, uh, no. It's. Answer me. My voice unintentionally grew louder as I struggled to contain. My emotions. Remembering my in-laws were in another room, I was snapped back to reality. Please, just answer me. When did it start? I asked my husband again, who was now wearing an uncomfortable expression. About a year ago. He replied quietly. A year ago? So around the time we started living together with your parents? Yeah. I thought you were working overtime, but you were cheating, even with your parents living with us. How could you do such a thing? Well, that's. Let's discuss this tomorrow with your parents included, all four of us. After saying that, I headed to the bedroom. My husband didn't come to the bedroom all night. The next morning, I woke up to a knock on the bedroom door, and saw Mary standing there with a pale face. Mary, what's wrong? Beth, it's terrible. Come quickly. I hurried to the living room, as she asked, and found divorce papers and a letter on the table. In my husband's handwriting, it said, "Please submit these for me." What is this? Beth, Carl's belongings are almost all gone. He must have run away. No way. 
rushing to check the room, I indeed found that most of his belongings were gone. I had lost to his mistress. That thought briefly crossed my mind. Oh, why? Tears streamed down my face nonstop. Mary, flustered, tried to comfort me. I'm so sorry, Beth. Really. <laughs> While I cried, she kept rubbing my back. Scott, apparently understanding everything, looked embarrassed. A few hours later, Mary approached me, now calmer. Beth, are you okay? I'm really sorry. No, it's okay now. But Mary, I can't be with Carl anymore. Yes, I understand. You'll get a divorce. Don't worry about us. It's our son's fault. I'm sorry. Thank you. I decided to divorce my husband and, after much hesitation, submitted the divorce papers. But there was still something I needed to discuss with him. I called him with the intention of it being the last time. After several attempts, he finally answered. What do you want? He answered grumpily. What do you mean, what do I want? After all you've done. It's over, right? You've submitted the divorce papers, haven't you? Yes, I have. I called because there's something important to discuss. What's there to talk about? We're divorced. I'm living happily with Erica. What? Stop already. Just tell me your address right now. Why should I tell you? Not for me. For your parents. They need to know where you are, or we can't proceed from here. Carl fell silent for a moment, then said something unbelievable. You take care of my parents. What? I've left that house. It's up to you to look after them. What are you saying? Is this a joke? I'm serious. Erica's parents are wealthy. You know, the S group? Her father is the executive there. This new house was given to us as a wedding gift. It's not normal to live with parents as newlyweds, you know? I couldn't care less. Enough with your selfishness. You think this is acceptable? He laughed through his nose in response to my trembling anger. <laughs> Planning revenge because I left you? Ridiculous. See, this is exactly why I got tired of you. What? I'm telling you. I'm getting married to her this weekend and going on a honeymoon at the end of the month. I don't have time for you or my parents. Are you serious? I wanted to marry her right away. But since you were taking care of my parents, I continued this loveless marriage. Be grateful I extended our marriage this long. He hung up, abruptly. At that moment, my pent-up emotions snapped. I won't forgive this. Such an unjust ending can't be right. I'll definitely get revenge on Carl and his mistress. A wave of uncontrollable anger surged through me. I had no more tolerance for this man. For now, I decided to tell my in-laws about the phone call. After hearing the whole story, Scott was shaking with rage. In the midst of this, Mary made an unexpected statement. Listen, I have an idea. What? Scott and I looked at each other, surprised by her words. She shared a plan with us, and we decided to execute it to coincide with Carl's honeymoon. A month later, my ex-husband, euphoric on his honeymoon, called me. Hello? Oh, Beth... It's been a while. How are you? He had called back as I had previously requested him to contact me when he returned. While containing my growling irritation, I got straight to the point. Did you enjoy your honeymoon? Yeah, it was incredibly fun. Plus, Erica's parents paid for the whole trip. They said it's because I'm their precious daughter's chosen one. Sick, right? 
Isn't that nice? Creating one last beautiful memory. Last? My married life with Erica has just begun. You really don't get it, do you? <laughs> Stop being so envious. I wonder who's the one not getting it. Apparently, they still hadn't realized anything. Carl, not listening to me, went on saying whatever he wanted, calling me clingy and telling me to get lost. I decided to reveal the whole truth to him. You know, you don't have a home to return to anymore. What? What are you talking about? We're going to stay at the new house Erica's parents lent us. Someone else lives there now. What? Who's living there? Your parents. What? He seemed unable to comprehend my unexpected revelation, repeatedly saying, What? And, huh? Over the phone. I continued without paying him any mind. You should have told Erica's parents everything. That your relationship started from an affair. That you were married at that time. You? You told her parents? Not me. It was your mother who contacted them. What? Mom did? How did she get their contact information? From S Group, the company where Erica's father works. You told me yourself, remember? Oh. Yes. From the conversation with my ex-husband, I knew the company where his mistress's parents worked. I had already reported this to Mary and Scott. The plan Mary suggested was to reveal everything to the mistress's parents. We intended it to discuss it properly after telling them, but they had no idea their daughter's relationship started as an affair. Outraged after hearing the truth from Mary, they decided to let Mary and Scott use the apartment they had lent to the couple as compensation. Carl probably bragged to me, thinking it was something to be proud of, but it backfired this time. After explaining our plan, he was at a loss for words. Oh, and the belongings you left at your new place were sent to Erica's parents. Her father was furious, saying, Come and explain everything and apologize. He was furious? What have you done, Beth? You ruined everything I had hidden so well. Don't bring up unnecessary things. Unnecessary? I'm just stating the facts. That's what's unnecessary. I had a job lined up at S Group through her father's connections. I even quit my previous job, and now it's all gone. <laughs> my laughter made him snap. Hey... What's so funny? <laughs> sorry, sorry. It's just so absurdly stupid, I couldn't help it. What did you say? It's your fault this happened. Apologize. Even now, he showed no remorse. The man I once chose had fallen so low. It was sad to think about it, but I had no intention of forgiving him. This was the end of our relationship. I unleashed all my pent-up anger and resentment. Apologize? Why should I? You're the one who created this mess. You failed to properly handle things, and that's why we're here. Don't you get it, you effing jerk? Whoa, um, Beth. Don't call me by my name, it's disgusting. I feel so refreshed now that we're divorced. He became silent, probably panicking. Thanks for cheating. I'll be looking forward to a hefty alimony from you. Alimony? Wait, I'm in a tough spot with work right now. Like I care about your problems. Work your butt off with that stupid woman of yours and pay up every cent. Make sure you pay it all, no matter what it takes. Brace yourself, jerk. Wait, Beth. I cut him off mid-sentence, hung up the phone and blocked his number. It was finally over. I was free from this mess. The exhaustion hit me as soon as the call ended. Later, I sought a lawyer and demanded the maximum alimony from my ex-husband and his mistress. He ended up in debt after paying the lump sum and was completely cut off by the mistress's parents. Carl lost his job and was kicked out of the house. Thus, they plummeted from the peak of happiness to the depths of hell. Now, they're working non-stop from dawn to dusk with all their earnings going towards debt repayment, completely stripped of their freedom. As for me, I'm enjoying my new single life, living freely. 
I still keep in touch with my former in-laws and have regular meals with them. They apologize every time we meet. Beth, we're really sorry for what that idiot did. I know it's inexcusable, but we are very sorry. Mary, Scott, it's okay. Look, the food is getting cold. They seem to feel guilty, but I don't mind at all. The relationship I built with them is genuine. It seems like our relationship will continue. They've treated me like a real daughter, and I want to repay their kindness someday.